A subject that I've been wanting to talk about for a very long time now is food dyes. All right, I think food dyes are causing a lot of issue. I think they're causing a lot of the hypertensiveness, you know, type hyper activity or whatever that you see in a lot of kids. I think they are causing, you know, I, everybody's blaming sugar for this, but we had sugar back in the day, right? We had sugar. Everybody had sugar on their dining room table or on their counter. There was, everybody had like a container of it when I was growing up. And then all of a sudden you started noticing everybody getting, you know, scared of sugar, but processed food kept getting more and more increased. Everything in a bag, everything in a, you know, container of some kind has for the most part food dyes in it. Right. I went the other day, I was uh, wanting to get uh, pickles and even the pickles that I was looking at had food dye in them. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Normally I get the pickles at whole foods just cause I do. And I went to a regular grocery store and there's food dyes in the pickles and they were also in the uh banana peppers now i have regular banana peppers but i remember during the winter when he couldn't really get banana peppers and i was wanted to get some that were pickled and they had food dye in them i'm like this is ridiculous so anyway synthetic food dyes which are made from petroleum-based chemicals have been linked to a number of health concerns red three has been uh shown to cause cancer in animals and now here's the thing very little of this has been studied on humans because there's very little incentive on doing so because there's very much money coming from the industry who's making it to make other people not do these studies. Okay. So red 30 has been shown to cause cancer in animals and other dye dyes may also be carcinogenic. Red 40, for example, has been shown to damage DNA in both vitro and in vivo studies. Some dyes such as blue one, yellow five, and yellow six can cause hypersensitivity um, reactions that are similar to allergies. Some studies have linked food dyes to behavioral and development, developmental issues in children, such as hyperactivity, inattentiveness, and impaired memory. Now think about these food dyes. Think about when they were really, really being pushed back in the 80s, 70s, 80s. And this is when uh, Adderall and, you know, all these other cures, cures to ADHD and everything else were coming around because they were putting food dyes in everything. They were blaming there's too much sugar. You're eating too much sugar. Meanwhile, the Asians at that time were skinny, healthy, smart, weren't eating a Western diet, had none of these diseases, didn't have hyperactivity, didn't have hypersensitivity. Now they have them. Now they got them like all, like everybody that eats a Western diet. They got all this stuff that we have from the Western diet. A study from Cornell and Binghamton University found that nanoparticles in food dyes, such as titanium dioxide, which is terrible. And if you're somebody who gets uh, dressings or something on the shelf, a lot of times they have titanium dioxide in it, which is absolutely terrible for you and also rains from the skies if you know what i mean with the false clouds that everybody's been seeing and silicon dioxide can negatively affect the digestive system by damaging digestive proteins this is going to cause leaky gut so if you're somebody who eats a lot of packaged foods and a lot of you know crap food and everything like that or if you have a lot of like i don't know mountain dew or whatever None of that's natural dyes, right? So, you know, if you have digestion issues, maybe look into that. To avoid harmful synthetic food dyes, you can check the ingredient list on packaging labels. And here's another thing. 2020, they no longer are required for whatever reason to have any transparency. So whether they use it or not, but you can usually tell. I mean, it's like super bright. Like these things were dyed naturally. These are the... Trader Joe's fruity jellies, kettle cooked, uh, soft gummy candy, and the food dyes in this thing are just regular vegetable juice. Basically, it's turmeric, uh, beet, and I guess that's it. Just different different color levels from that, right? So really look into what you are eating. What is what is the name of this? What is food dye? So I I wanted to to list the the most common. So here's the seven most common 
Ludine, number one, a study observed uh, developmental delays and behavioral dif difficulties in animals. Another study found associated developmental effects on the nervous system. You know, that's not good, right? Blue dye number two, consumption of this chemical caused increased incidence of tumors in rats. Limited individual studies have been conducted. They're not going to conduct these studies. There's no money to be made on it. There's only money to lose on it. Because they got all this petroleum byproduct. What are they going to do with it? And they've found many things to do with it. Green dye number three, an animal study found a significant increase in bladder tumors and associated with the consumption of this chemical. Limited individual studies have been conducted. It is the least used of these seven dyes. I actually don't know if I've ever seen it. Uh, green, uh, red, red number three, ingestion of this chemical caused cancer in rats. It's banned from use in cosmetics as enforced by the FDA, but they'll let it in food for some reason. Make that make sense. Red dye number 40, hazardous to children's brains during critical periods of development. And who eats the most food dyes? Yellow dye number five, insensitive children, as little as one milligram of yellow number five can affect behavior, causing uh, irritability, restlessness, and sleep disturbance. And I had sleep issues as a kid. Uh, yellow dye number six, studies found potential contamination with uh, benzidine or other cancer-causing chemicals. Name one good thing that comes from this. And if you really need to make a food dye, it's not that hard to just make a juice and, you know, use that. I made a red velvet cake, I think it was two or three years ago. I just used beet juice and it was fine. Uh, I can't think of anything else. I mean, this is no different than, you know, all this petroleum byproducts that they keep pushing on us, right? When I was growing up, Everybody used paper bags. And all of a sudden, these commercials came around saying the paper bags were destroying the planet. And, that you know, uh, it was raising the, you know, it was removing the, the atmosphere and the ozone layer was destroyed by these paper bags. And we need to use plastic bags instead. Like, who, who, you know, who thought of that was a good idea? And they're like, well, these plastic bottles, they're made of sand and they're natural material. But we got to replace these with, you know, plastic. If you throw a glass bottle in a lake or an ocean or a sea or whatever you want to call it, it turns back to sand. If you throw a plastic bottle, an animal dies. Crazy. All right, so let's watch this. This this lady, I guess, pharmacist, is talking about it. I'm going to fast forward. Where I talk, everything, health, pharmacy, and beauty. So if that interests you, stick around and subscribe for more. So today's video I think is very important, especially if you have kids, nieces or nephews or if you're just concerned about what goes in your mouth and is it healthy or not. Yes, food colors do make your food look aesthetically pleasing but at the cost of your health. Do you notice that your kid gets hyper after eating a cookie coated with a bright green but it's the sugar. frosting or that bright red candy? Well, yes, it's natural to assume that sugar is the culprit here, but research suggests... And I don't understand why that's natural, because you're you're mixing sugar with fat, and that is just is not a good combination. ...that some of the blame goes to the artificial food dyes as well. You know, there are so many artificial... Food Think about this now. So you got food dyes that make kids hyperactive and sensitive and then want to not be able to sleep or whatever... And then you're making, you're giving the uh, Randall cycle with the fat and the sugar. It's it's bad. Food dyes like red number three, red number forty, uh, blue number one, and you know so many others. I'll just list the whole um, list on this. And there is no blue in nature, right? Like they're they're called blueberries, but they're technically purple. Screen here. But what I'm trying to say here is that all the synthetic dyes... I'm talking about food. I mean, you, you know, obviously the ocean sometimes looks blue. ...are basically the same and are made out of petroleum. And there are some kind of, some allergies and... So, all right, but I'm talking like, in most cases, it's actually purple. Yes, you heard me right. The same petroleum that fuels our vehicles is being used to make these artificial food dyes. And unfortunately... 15 million pounds of food dyes is used just in the United States. You know, it's present in your packaged lemonade, uh, fruit rolls, bakery goods, and even in your yogurt. 
Can you imagine that? Apparently, yogurt is supposed to be healthy. Another lie. You know, and the crazy thing is that these food manufacturers tell us right on the ingredient label that artificial food coloring or artificial flavoring has been added yet most consumers don't seem to be worried about it because a lot of people don't really know what these artificial flavors and dyes are made of and how they're actually harming our health you know i imagine it's probably because most of us don't even know what are the health risks of uh, these artificial food colors that's why i made this dedicated video just to discuss the harmful effects of the food colors on our health First of all, the food colors have literally no nutritional value. You know, they add no nutrition to your food. They're basically used just for aesthetic purpose. I mean, I get it, without food colors, your colas wouldn't be brown, mint ice wouldn't be... The brown is like the least offensive of all of them. It's just burnt sugar. Uh, caramel color is just, you know, burnt sugar. I mean, it's not even burnt green i believe and red velvet cake wouldn't be bright red you know sounds quite boring but just think about it that these food colors are made out of petroleum which is a crude oil and is used to make gasoline and diesel fuel how does that sound i'm sure not appetizing and healthy right and you'll be surprised to know that some of these food colors actually contain uh, cancer causing substances how surprised really are we Several studies conducted on animals showed that red dye 3 caused the thyroid tumor in rats and blue 2 dye may cause the brain and bladder tumor in rats. Now, I understand that although these studies are done on animals, unfortunately, that's why the safety of artificial food colors is very controversial. But here's my question for those who are skeptical about it. Since artificial food color is adding no value to your food and is used just to make your food look aesthetic, which I get it, the look of the food is important, but why not go for natural food colors, right? You'll see all the processed food contain artificial colors and flavoring, which we all know the processed foods are bad for us and they're cutting the cost of manufacturing by not using the natural sources of food color but they're just using the cheap artificial food colors and if that reason is not good enough for you then how about that the research shows that the artificial food colors may cause hyperactivity in your children and they blame it on sugar they blame it on sugar would you want that for your kids? And then they give, uh, you know, they tell you to not to have sugar and here's some whatever all, you know, like Adderall, whatever all it is in to, to, you know, control the kids. You know, in fact, in and then they wonder why they got all these developmental issues. In 1973, a pediatric allergist claimed that hyperactivity and learning problems in children were caused by artificial food coloring and preservatives in food. And, and that guy probably got in an accident, in an accident somewhere, just like uh, all the, uh, these other doctors. Their clinical study found that removing artificial food dyes from diet, along with the uh, preservative called um, sodium benzoate, significantly reduced hyperactive symptoms. You know, although not all children react the same way to food dyes, some seem to be more sensitive than the others. But artificial food dyes also have been shown to negatively impact the functioning of the liver and other vital organs. So I literally think that just for the aesthetic look of the food, I wouldn't want to risk all that for my children. Because these artificial food dyes are interfering with the digestive enzymes that our bodies produce to help properly break down the food that we eat. And also they increase the intestinal permeability, which is also known as the leaky gut. You know Okay. I'm gonna leave it I think I'm gonna leave it there. I think I've said enough, right? You know, do what you wanna do, but this stuff really is just not good for you at all. It's just not good for you in any way, shape, or form. If there is a way for you to avoid it, I would do that. It, you know, maybe once in a while is fine, but there are so many people that have this stuff every single day. Anyway, comments, questions down below, like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.